I will call this meeting to order at 6.03 on the 13th of April. Um, we will follow the agenda, I guess. And um, minutes from the 30th of May. I um, move we uh, vote to um, the meeting. I minutes. doubt it's the 30th of May. Um, I guess it's March. Oh. That's yes, probably I would, a fair, I would think it's March. Know, the salient point by Fred. Um, the 30th of March review. I vote to approve the meeting minutes from the previous meeting, which was March 30th. Second. Um, was I, I think I was there, right? Yes. The, the, the minutes say you were. Okay. I don't Good. know if you right. actually were, but the minutes say you were. <laughs> uh, uh, all those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Me, yes. All right. Um, vendor and payroll warrants, they look fine by me. I signed them earlier today. Um, public comment for anybody who would like to comment on items not included on tonight's agenda. Is there anybody? Seeing and hearing none, we will move on to the next item on the agenda, which is uh, a public hearing uh, regarding a uh, continuation from uh, a previous meeting where we talked about <clears throat> a reissuance of or the, tra the transfer of licenses. Um, do I do I need to read something, Brian, before we close? Um, you mean to open? Yeah. Um, you could just say that that we're reopening the. Okay, we are reopening the public hearing. Um, on uh, the transfer of um, liquor license and entertainment license um, to a new uh, company. Uh, and then Brian, I'm going to <clears throat> um, immediately, do I need to make a motion to close the hearing? Because they have withdrawn their um, application. That's correct. The board received an email from attorney Tom Wester this afternoon, um, shortly after 1.30 which indicated that they, the, the uh, prospective owners wish to withdraw both the alcohol license and the entertainment license applications at this time. Okay. So there's not much to, we can. Not much to talk about really. Not much to talk about no. at this point. So do we, do we vote uh, to close I, or can I just close? Um, oh, let's vote. Let's vote, oh. sure. I uh, move, move we close, close this hearing. hearing. I oh. second that motion. All right, Joyce gave in. <laughs> All those in favor, Fred. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Me, yes. Uh, anything new on COVID-19 protocol, Brian? Um, nope, nothing new. That's just that's just a place. You're, you're muted, Brian. You suddenly muted yourself. <laughs> I like to do that before I start talking. Um, uh, no, there's nothing new. It's okay. It's a placeholder okay. that we have in case something um, comes up. We're, okay, old business. We're going to talk about uh, green community grant application, and that means that we get to listen to Hannah Davis. Yay. That's me. <laughs> so um, I'm going to present what we're the update, and it sounds a little bit like a logic puzzle. So bear with me. Um, we have two factors to consider. One uh, is the contractors. We have Mark Lance, who is an independent contractor and Energy Source, who is an Eversource approved um, project expediter, basically. Um, Mark Lance is the person we've been working with previously. He wrote us up a um, proposal. The problem is he doesn't provide energy calculations, which we need to apply to the grant program. Um, and uh, the benefit is that we wouldn't have to go out to bid with his program, but we need the energy calculations. Um, with energy source, um, they provide the energy calculations. We won't have, we also won't have to go out to bid with them if we keep it under a hundred thousand and they provide utility incentives. Um, the only con with that is that they won't do mechanicals this round because it's a little bit too close to the deadline. However, the building needs to be proven that it's reasonably weatherized anyway, before we can even consider applying for mechanicals. And it's not that. So I think we need to focus primarily on weatherization right now. Um, so with all of that in mind, my recommendation is that we move forward with energy sources 
audit recommendation or um, energy sources audit. Um, they are still finishing putting it together. So I don't have an application to present to be approved tonight. Um, so uh, I think it'll need to be approved by the select board by a vote, right, Brian, um, before it gets turned in um, either on April 22nd or in October. Right, so, so this is for the Waitley Elementary School and um, the spring deadline. So there's two deadlines for green communities. One is the spring, April 22nd, as Hannah said, then there's a deadline in October as well. There's, um, it's um, one year and there's two grant rounds. Um, so Hannah, the, the, um, the one from Energy Source will be due on the 22nd. So the board would have to, in, in a sense, vote to allow or, or vote to, you know, apply that, uh, apply for that. Right. Um, um, additionally, there is one more benefit to going with Energy Source is that they will apply to Mass EVIP for us to get electric vehicle charging stations wherever we want in the town. Um, so if you would like to go with them, I'm also gonna ask you for uh, your top priorities for where you would like to see electric vehicle charging stations in town. So could I ask a question first? Yeah. Did the, at the last meeting, I think it was the last meeting, <clears throat> uh, we talked about you reaching out to Paul Newland to get his background on, on more specificity around what we were presented to by the UMass group. Did you, were you able to find time to do that? Unfortunately, I didn't get to do that this time around. Um, the UMass, so the UMass audit is helpful. It's outdated um, and the prices are outdated. And I think some of the numbers are also outdated. So um, that's why I initially yeah. went with energy source. I, I, I get that. I, I just, the, the <clears throat> concepts they had around different um mechanicals to purchase that had sort of six it, it's like the stomach of a cow it, it had six whatever's inside the one whatever and i know that's incredibly technical um and it and there was a reason for it because i i don't know there was a a, a a heat sink or what but there was some it was some really interesting stuff around because of the capacity that we have in the school um, it seemed to be a good match. So I just want to make sure that we're taking advantage of that creativity at some level. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that we can in the future. Um, but unfortunately, the way that the grant program is structured, they require that the building be weatherized first instead of um, going with weatherization, which is like completing the building envelope and doing insulation and doing mechanicals. If we could afford all of that in one round, I think it would be great. But um, with the amounts that I'm expecting to see from energy source and that I've seen from Mark Lance, I don't think that um, all of it will fall under $200,000, which is the maximum grant amount for this round. Okay. So do I hear, does anybody have any questions for Hannah? Um, yeah, I guess my only question is procedural. Um, we're going to somehow find uh, you, he's going to turn in something before um, April 22nd to you. And so basically we're uh, proving a plan that we get, don't get to see, but you know enough about the plan to be confident that it's what we want to go with. Yeah. So one, I'd be totally happy to send you the application before I turn it in. I also don't want it to go totally unapproved. I think that more eyes is better than fewer. Um, and two, these people are approved by Energy Source, um, and I'm kind of putting my blind trust in. Say Energy terms. Source or EverSource. I'm sorry, EverSource. That so they're called Energy Source, but they're approved by EverSource. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's why I've been trusting them with that. Okay. Okay. So not related. But we need to vote to approve this, and we don't have another meeting before. Do we? What, oh, when is our next? Do we have a meeting before the twenty second? I guess that's the other question. No, uh, I think next meeting would be the 27th. Right. I mean, we um, could schedule one. We could schedule a quick one if that's what, if that's what right. you wanted. I, um, I personally trust Hannah. Yeah, I'd like to see it. I think you're right. More eyes is better than that. But I'm, I'm guessing I would probably agree with your approval, but I, I would be interested to see it. Absolutely. 
but Joyce, you're okay sort of giving her our blessing. Yeah, yeah, I'm 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 fine with that. And uh and if if there if for some reason there's something like horrible that neither of us recognize, then there's there's still time to um to not app, send in that application, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the beauty of this is that we could have the application totally prepared and then just send it in in October and have an extra six months to work on it. Mm. And there's no difference in funding availability. Mm. Well, but there is a difference in terms of, in terms of getting the building sealed. Um, you get it, it'll, it'll happen there. six months sooner, presumably, if we get the application six and months it, sooner. And in theory, that will save us money. Right. So I'd like to get it in because I'm tired, you know, I don't, this has been, this can's been kicking up and down a road for quite a while now. So my preference would be if we give you our blessing um, that we get it in before the 22nd. That sounds Assuming great. Assuming you think that we'll, we'll get a green light. If you don't think we can put together a quality product then we shouldn't do it. No, I think that we can. So I have most of the generic stuff already written up in the application. I really just need to plug and chug with the numbers that they'll give me in the specific details. Okay. And there's no relationship, and I'm just saying this because of the similarities in names. Um, <clears throat> Eversource, Energy Source, no connection at all that you know of? Well, I mean, there's a connection in that they work together. So I believe Energy Source is a project expediter who is approved by the utility of Eversource. Um, and that allows for easier procurement laws. Um, all under the umbrella of the Green Communities Grant Program. But it's not a subsidiary. It's not a... No. There's, 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 there's no ownership. I don't think so, no. Okay, good. No, it's, it's simply, a, it's, it's a matter of, it's a matter of procurement law in that the law allows utilities to pre-approve contractors. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, they... I, yep. I just found the name interesting and I just wanted to make sure that... <laughs> Because I trust Energy Source, I don't necessarily trust Eversource. Oh, those those double poles are coming down any time now. And yeah. And Chris, I didn't. And Chris, I didn't say that in in a publicly recorded meeting. <laughs> Thumbs up. All right. Um, so okay. So do I hear a, a motion to let? I um, move we submit the application for uh, April twenty second. Yeah, I'll second that as described uh, by Hannah. As described, yeah. Right. Okay. And Hannah will get us a draft as quickly as possible so we can eyeball it, however. Yes. Um, uh, one more thing. Sorry. Yeah. One more thing before we move on. Would you be willing to give me your top priority locations for electric vehicle charging stations in town? Can we finish the vote first? I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Aye. <clears throat> me, yes. Uh, my top priority would be a, 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 a two, a, at least two stations at um, town offices so that um, it could be used uh, by Waitley Inn residents when they, or Waitley Inn, God, Waitley Inn customers um, when they are using our, our parking for. I think you mean town hall. Town not hall, town not town office. office. What did I say? You said town offices, town offices, I think. Okay, yeah, town hall, I apologize, yes. Um. Yeah, I would, I would think at least one at the highway department and one at the police department. I would, yeah, or a shared larger charging station at that that whole right. um, facility there, because I think that's where our next electric vehicles are going to be, one with the highway department, one with the police department. Just as a point of interest for the police department, um, if it's an option, because <clears throat> we, we do garage one of the cruisers, so it would be nice to be able to charge it in while it's in the garage. But during our shift, we we don't park it in the garage. We park it out front. So I don't know if that's you have a garage. Well, it's yeah. our it's our bay. It's yeah, it's where the garage is where the cruisers yeah, house. Yeah, carport. A closed in carport with a garage door. Okay. All right. But just just have like a point of interest. So I, yeah, I like Joyce's idea of, of sort of a, a larger shared system that, that both highway yeah. could use as well as. But, um, and honestly, Hannah, if 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 you, as long as you're writing this in, maybe a structure that has little solar panels on top, you know, like that to so that whoever's charging is actually in the shade and we're 
producing a little okay i'm just saying i love a solar canopy absolutely a little solar canopy over our charging stations and yeah that's that's yeah anyway i want that would, that would work great at the police slash highway garage because then we would have additional carports to park under while we're charging right and we don't want jim to get overheated that's, that's right. what he's really going on don't want that mm -hmm. yep Awesome. Okay, so to sum up, two stations at Town Hall near Waitley Inn. Um, one, okay, so like one maybe at the Highway of Police or one shared larger one. Um, would you like one for indoors and one for outdoors or just, I mean, I can ask for all and we can see what happens. How many miles do you go in a day, Jim? Uh, well, it depends. I guess it depends on who's what, working. If what's you were a long average, day? If you were to average it out on the course of a weekend, it could it could easily be a couple hundred miles a day. Because we're running 16 hours a day on the weekends for one car. But during the week, anywhere between 60 and 100 miles. <clears throat> yeah. I would do one in per personally, again, and, and somebody may have a better idea. I would make sure there was one in, but then... I share it out. But awesome. that means that the canopies have to be taller than the average bear. Yeah. So I think that this grant specifically only covers the solar charging, or excuse yeah. me, the uh, car charging, electric vehicle charging. Um, but solar canopies are an awesome idea and definitely okay. something that I can right. incorporate into future grant applications. Okay. I would think a station at town offices as well. Okay. Yeah, probably. It, it, can this go on private property as well, Hannah, or is it, is it public property only? It can go on private property. Um, we need a letter of support from the property owner. I would suggest if you can get a turnaround fast enough. I'm just thinking of the <clears throat> three areas in town that see the highest parking area. Another one at the Waitley Inn. Mm -hmm. um, the diner and Quan Quan. Oh, yeah. Quan Quan. Like, unless somebody can think of a, another place that has a, a lot of parking. Yankee Candle. Hurlihy. Hurlihy. Yankee Candle in their, at their manufacturing place. That's right. a lot if, of we, yeah, if we come up with like 16 of these, though, we have to say what our top priorities are. Oh, so it can't be just a laundry list. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can give them a laundry list, but I it's dependent on the funding that's available. I don't know that we'll get all of them. I mean, I think Fred's idea is a good one in terms of Hurley. He, uh, that 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 beats out um, the the private places because that place is just packed. And, and I think we need to well, emphasize the public places anyway. Yeah, that they should be yeah. the top priorities. Yeah, a and with the new. Uh, configuration of Hurley going on, on, going on, it will behoove us to plan to perhaps put a charging station <clears throat> that can be shared by the handicap accessibility place, but not doesn't doesn't have to be only that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You just really need you need really long cables, which is fine, um, but it it you have to try and make it so that you don't. Um, tie up one of the chart like if you have like those dual charging stations that it won't be tied up if there's no handicapped person there right. parking using the electricity you have to have a, a way so it's often uh, something where you have two chargers but you could access it from any of four spaces and uh, maybe one of those is a handicapped space so the handicapped folks have access to the charging but if there's no <coughs> handicapped person then you can still have uh, multiple cars using the chargers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you got it, Hannah? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Let us move on to um, fiscal year 23 budget. Brian, do we have anything to discuss? So this was a placeholder. If, if there was um, anything that the select board needed to discuss from the finance committee meeting last night, um, I unfortunately wasn't able to attend. So um well it was it was like i think unicorns and stars and goodness and light was yeah that's what i remember well. yeah 
Okay. Nothing got dinged. <laughs> Uh, well, they did not go with the personnel committee's recommendation on salary increases, COLAs. Um, so that that part was not as as goodness and lighty as um, as I may have um, led you to believe a moment ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, they they cut from the personnel committee recommended three point seven five, and the finance committee approved three for COLAs. For yeah. COLAs, yeah. With the CPI hitting eight percent, and uh, right. they're ba basically they're just in denial that that there is price inflation, and they're saying, but everybody's on a fixed income, but Social Security is getting a bigger raise. Oh, but then you still have to pay this other thing for Medicaid, and it's it's sort of like the fact that people are on fixed incomes. Mm -hmm. I that is a problem, but that doesn't mean that employees facing higher prices don't also have a problem. Their solution was to go to 3% because a lot of other towns were doing that. And, um, you know, you can, you can listen to their deliberations. I definitely, I definitely spoke up. Um, as, as did I. Yeah. Well, uh, the, to me, the question is, do, you know, is the difference between three and 3.75 big enough to sort of, uh, what's the right word, make a stink out of it and propose a second budget number that would include a 3.75 COLA for town employees. What's that number? Do we know? I don't know. I don't think Brian's gotten all those things through yet because they just decided the 3% last night. So that what, would be what, the What question. are you talking about? The, the total... Oh, the difference, difference between, in dollars between three point yeah, seven five and three is about six thousand dollars. Oh, oh, you, I, you already know the number between difference between three percent and three point seven five percent on the COLA yeah, is it, about. The, well, the difference between three point seven five and two point seven five, which oh. was a number that was thrown out last time, was eight thousand. So I'm figuring that oh. the three, it's six thousand. Yeah. No, I, I. I appreciate it. I just wanted to know what the impact to the town was on, on those two numbers. And I personally, you know, CPI is, at, I didn't know it was as high as eight right now. Um, and it's been high now for six months and it's not going to go down precipitously uh, in the next six months, um, especially with the war going on and, and all that. I, you guys, I am very comfortable putting up our own number and letting the town decide. As My long as personal we... opinion is it's not, this isn't a fight worth having for that amount. I don't think it's worth a knockdown drag out fight on town floor I, over I, this amount. I'm not suggesting a knockdown drag out fight, Fred. I'm suggesting that let the townspeople decide whether someone who is making you know, fifty thousand dollars a year is going to get X increase or Y increase, and 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 let them decide. They they are the legislative body of of Whaley. Uh, um, I could I could go either way on it. I, I'm glad you had the number, so we know approximately what the difference to the the bottom line is, and six thousand dollars with you know seven hundred some odd households is. you know, something like $10 a household? The, the in... bigger, I think the bigger issue that the finance committee had is that it, it just keeps raising the level of the employee's salary, which I think is not a valid argument, which if you watch last <laughs> night's meeting, you will hear me go through. Uh, but again, I, it, it's not, I'd rather right. give it to the employees if we can, or maybe we can find a way to get it to them in the form of a bonus, mm -hmm. maybe COVID related, rather than giving it, having a fight over the... Uh... Yeah, to me, that is the essential question. Is this worth having the fight over? Because we got them up to three, you know? That, I, I, so, I, I, and at this point, my judgment is, I don't really know because they're they're really mad. 
that the personnel committee <clears throat> proposed 3.75. They were just visibly angry um, with that that these people on this personnel committee, who do they think they are, saying 3.75%. I, I know, I know, it doesn't make any sense to me either. But well, they, they were looking at the numbers from the surrounding towns, many of which aren't even finalized. Or Oh, they're, they're mostly just, not finalized. They're mostly not finalized. We're coming in around two and a half. I, as you guys know, I am, I am not a fan of comparative policy dri driving. Then you uh, would hate last night's meeting. What yeah, other good thing you weren't there. Entirely up to other towns. And, and I don't think the personnel committee should do it either. And, and I've been, gone on record on that. So I, I, I guess my point is more, I don't want the town, Fred, I'm using your words because I wasn't there, that it, it was, and I'm paraphrasing, it was not a, a, a sound argument. If we should not be in the business of endorsing arguments that aren't sound, um, because it's, it's a bad precedent. If we don't think it's a sound argument, then we shouldn't be, be, be supporting it because we should be making decisions based upon fact and objectivity, not subjectivity that perhaps is created by a visceral reaction. And, and I would have totally agree, except for the fact that the 3.75 is not it's based in facts, but not a specific formula. It's sort of a general feeling yeah. on the part of the personnel committee. Oh, it was halfway three between. Three isn't enough and five is too much. <laughs> so let's go three and three quarters. It was halfway so between. It's not a scientifically arrived at number either. I'm telling you the scientific arrival. Six percent, two and a half percent. What's halfway between? 3.75. And... Except that that would be scientific if two and six, two point five, two point five was what other towns were then. doing, and CPI at that time was at six, and Social Security was at six. So we had all these numbers around six, and then we had well, most of these towns are still going two, two and a half, three, so two and a half and six. Three point seven five is halfway between. Ultimately, it's <laughs> as. I think not at this meeting, but previously, some, I think Brian said, it's more an art than a science when you really mm -hmm. get down to it. Oh, no, I, I, I don't disagree with that. I'm, I guess I'm just being practical in that you know, sometimes <coughs> they're worth having. How's it um, going? And sometimes it's better to hold mm -hmm. your powder and for later, for, for when you can have a better impact. Yeah, at, at the risk of... Uh, belittling the Ukrainian situation, I don't know that this is a hill we want to die on. Well, I don't think we would be dying necessarily. Well, we, it, figuratively. I know, and, and I get figuratively. I, I don't think that it's, you know, it, it's, I, I don't know who's going to, if, you know, I this is politics. If people get mad at, at us because of, of politics, this this is why we should be it should be okay to have a debate as opposed to worrying about who's going to get upset. It's po politics and public policy is about coming together and finding common ground when you have differences. And I get really tired of wanting to avoid the discussion because it's out of a comfort zone. And I I and I get it's a bee in my bonnet. I get it. And, and, and to me, it's a question of at what point do you fight and at what point do you say this isn't, the amount isn't big enough to, to put that much effort into a fight over. Okay. And that's, that's my feeling on this is that just, just isn't, a, if we're going to have a fight, let's have it over a big issue. This isn't really a big issue. When you spread $6,000 across town employees, uh, it's, you know, we're well under 1% of the total salary for the town that we're talking about. Yeah. If, if you guys want to go down that route, I'm, I'm fine with it. I, I will give you a, a heads up that at town meeting, I will probably be more than comfortable saying that our process to determine cost of living adjustments in town is 
incredibly flawed. And it's not based upon anything scientific or anything objective. It's based almost purely on subjectivity. And that it is yet another system that I think needs to be fixed at some point. Well, John, can I can I push back on that a little bit? Sure. If I you're going to say that, then you better come up with a scientific way to do it. Because as far as I can tell, the personnel committee is using as scientific a method as we have. We, uh, we do it based on data. Granted, we don't have perfect data. So if you're going to say, hey, you guys are doing this flawed thing, you should fix it, then, then you need to come up with some way of fixing it. And I don't think you have that. I, well, so yes, I think I don't think the personnel committee should take this person. I'm not pointing my finger at the personnel committee in any way, shape, or form. Well, that, it that, sure that, does seem like it, John. Why? why? I said the because, <laughs> Well, because the personnel committee is the first group who does oh. it, and they do look at data. But and so to say that that it's not scientific in any way isn't really correct. It, it is not. We don't have the resources of the federal government to do a survey of consumer prices. We rely on the federal government to do that for us. And we use that data. That's what I would call at least partially scientific. It, okay. And it is scientific, but then even be it when you have the data, Joyce, you were talking about <laughs> going, going halfway between, you know, the comparables and the CPI. Who's to say you should be halfway? Why shouldn't it be six? Why shouldn't it be three quarters of the way? Right, right. I the, agree, but we're an using art, not data, a science. and we're using things to to you know put an upper limit and put a lower limit on things, and you better come up with something better than that. Oh, and by the way, to change the subject just a tiny bit, there was a breakdown of the the latest consumer price index in the New York Times, and it was like eight point nine, close to nine percent was was the average for all of the totals. Did you know that petroleum-based energy, 70% increase? Yeah. Electricity, 11% increase. So the more we can electrify, the better off we're going to be here. Um, so go, Hannah, go on the so electrification. I, I, you guys, I have, you know, if we want to, if, if we want to just, say okay to, to, to what the finance committee recommended. I, I am okay with that. Joyce, I'm, I'm begging yeah. you not to take it personally because it's not it, intended to be. It's, you know, I am- I'm not it. taking it personally. I'm telling you, you did just criticize the personnel committee for I, being I unscientific. I, I did not. You did, okay. <laughs> I criticized the town as a whole. Bottom line, it didn't even dawn on me that it was the personnel committee. So we're going to agree to disagree there. <laughs> fine. Um, but you guys, you know, it's it's we shouldn't be looking at what other towns do either. It just and they shouldn't look at what we do. It's apples and oranges at some level. And not a lot of people agree with you on that. Well, that's fine. Again, it's politics. I'm, I'm OK with that. It's about disagreement in a friendly, congenial way. Mm hmm. Um, I'll I'll hear a motion to do whatever you guys want to do. We don't even have to discuss to deal with this now. We have to deal with it in two weeks when okay. we finalize the budget for the water. Well, let's move on. I have another issue on the budget, yeah. however, and that deals with the purchase of the new police cruiser. Not that we shouldn't, but the question of are we looking at electric vehicles. I think we asked the chief to to look into it and come back at this meeting with at least some information. I think we did that. I, I don't recall an official request. I know I was going to meet with Hannah. Which, unofficial request. Which, which we did meet and discuss some things, um, but we haven't we haven't actually met to finalize anything to say whether we should do one thing or another. Um, th there are some things we've been compiling together. She's getting information um, on charging stations, which you guys are, are dealing with that. 
Um, I'm doing some research on other departments, other agencies that are that are using emergency vehicle or electric vehicles as frontline emergency vehicles. So that it's still it's still a work in progress. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I think there's. Well, I think before we purchase a new vehicle, we can even appropriate the money. Town meeting can appropriate the money. But before we actually purchase it, we should know whether an electric vehicle is feasible for this replacement vehicle. Yeah. And then more and more, it seems like there are vehicles that other departments are using as frontline vehicles and are happy with and are saving their communities money at the same time. So I, I, I don't know how to, like on an appropriation, finally say, yes, we appropriate this money, but we want it to be an electric vehicle, if at all possible. I don't think that restriction goes in on the appropriation. Um, I don't know, maybe Brian can say where that kind of, like who, who does the final approval of what vehicle gets, gets purchased? That I don't think I know. So maybe Brian can help us with that. I mean, if the appropriation specifies that it that it's to be an electric vehicle, then then that's what the, the purpose of those funds could be used for. Um, if it doesn't, then we sort of get into the issue of of right. I think Jim would agree, strong chief versus weak chief versus select board in terms of the discretion that the that a strong chief has in order, you know, purchasing equipment. Um, so there's a couple of different layers there. Well, but can we say that the building, the building, God, the the the, the vehicle will not be purchased until we can we can put parameters around 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 trigger mechanisms of when it's purchased. We're not saying that it's going to have to be something. We're saying that that data will be supplied to make a, a, a value decision based upon whether we can go ahead and, and, and purchase an electric vehicle for our next cruiser. I mean, you know, the, the new Ford pickup truck can power a house for three days. <laughs> That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> And electricity, uh oh, that, that everybody looks frozen to me. Uh, no, electricity no. has only gone up by ten percent. Fossil fuels I, have gone up by seventy percent. I'm still ownership on electric vehicle. It's very low. You're not always. You're not spending a lot of time going and changing the oil because you you've been running an ICE for for twenty four hours. Um, it's just. It's going to save us money, and everybody who uses them are happy with them. I, I just don't see a downside to making that an electric vehicle. Um, I, don't, I don't know the best mechanism. Maybe we just don't do the appropriation until a special town meeting when we have more clarity on uh, what kind of vehicles are available. So, don't, historically, don't people come to us and say, I'm ready to make this purchase? What do you guys think of these specs? That, I mean, I know I've had those conversations post appropriation in the past. Now, maybe that was happening because people were, were, were wanting to be um, collegial and, 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 and have a discussion, but I know I've had those conversations and I thought, mm -hmm. thought there, sat there thinking, well, just go ahead and purchase the thing. But I, I'm pretty sure these trigger, trigger mechanisms exist. I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, I mean, with capital items, it's often that there's a quote for, a, you know, for what in the in the article <clears throat> actually says to buy a such and such model, such and such for this amount of money. Um, that's what I'm remembering. I'm remembering that rather than at least on capital items, rather than someone coming in and saying, "Is it okay if I do this other thing?" Which which is how we came up with the amount for the capital item was getting a quote from the uh, manufacturer to say, this is how much it's going to cost. This is how much the equipment's going to cost. This is how much the installation is going to cost. And we, we have that number to 
to look at an electric vehicle. I mean, we don't have charging stations yet. We don't know yeah, what equipment that, we can put in them. I mean, but yeah, that's, yeah. I'm just saying, it's, that's not something we're going to learn overnight to be able mm -hmm. to say, well, let's get an emergency vehicle or electric vehicle now when mm -hmm. there's maybe, a lot. We also don't know what the lead time is for getting the electric vehicle, that maybe the charging stations could be in place by the time it was yeah. delivered. Or uh, the when, when Keith looked up the package for the truck that probably will be uh, in next year's budget, uh, it comes with a charging station. Um, that uh, they, they just roll that into the package. Um, Go through the markup they get, they're getting, I'll tell you. Well, it actually still makes good financial sense. Right. No, that's what I'm saying. It should, but yeah. it has come with a good markup. I, I don't know what that means, uh, right. but it, it it's already a good deal. And and just because you're going to need the charging station, just put it in the package. Hannah, um, do we have any idea there. what the timeline might be for getting a charging station installed? Yeah, so I asked about the timeline. Um, the funds replenish uh, at, typically at the end of August, beginning of September, late summer, early fall. Um, I asked about what the timeline would be once the funds were replenished and we got the actual application submitted. Um, he said that they've been having some really significant delays with supply chain, so he can't really give us a good estimate of when it should be coming. Um, but our application will be already in line and ready to go when those funds are replenished. So hopefully as soon as possible after then. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, when I had one put in my home, it took about a month uh, from the day we ordered it to the day the electrician came and installed it. Uh, I'm like, so it makes me wonder if uh, making an appropriation at this time is a little premature and maybe we should postpone this appropriation for uh, maybe a fall special town meeting. It, I'm okay whatever it is, like does not figure to impact the operating budget because this money is coming out of a vehicle stabilization fund anyway. So it's just a one, the direct pull from one, right. not the general fund. You guys call. I'll hear them. I'll, I'll listen to a motion or, I'll, you know, do we have to vote? What do we have to vote on here, Brian? You don't have to vote on anything tonight if you don't want to. Um, again, it would be a warrant article that would, would need to go on the um, right now, it would go on the annual town meeting. If you want to move it to a special, we could we could not put it on the annual, um, but it's a so separate that, article. So, yeah. So that decision could come next week or next time we meet. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the last, you know, the last uh, select board meeting where you, where we would want the board to sign would be um, the 11th, maybe uh, May 11th, probably. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, May 11th will be the last one, but hopefully we can have it pretty solid before then. Okay, let's um, let's let's. Okay. let's, let's and if, if we can get any more inf greater information about availability, feasibility, and cost before then, that would be great. Anna, could you do a little research, please? That'd be great. Yeah, sounds good. And Fred, and work, work with the chief on office. what his needs might be and what. Uh, you know, what they require in a vehicle. Yeah. Sounds good. I think that's that's going to be the the big issue. Looking to see what's available locally. I mean, if we're if we look at pushing it forward to August or November or something like that, um, I mean, I could I can do a little bit more research to see what's available at this time. We may we may be six months or a year away from being able to get a being able to get a car. Um, because it's not just the car, it's the equipment that has to go into the car, and it's finding equipment that will fit in the car, depending on which car we get, there may or may not be equipment available for it, so so there's a lot of factors to look in. And that's well. what I meant by feasibility. We've got to yeah. look into what what is doable. Yeah, and I, and I think we can look outside of Massachusetts. There's a lot of um, other states who are using electric vehicles for their 
police and the front line and um, that if we were to buy something from out of state, I don't think that's horrible. And at least one town in Massachusetts has them. I don't know if they're more than that at this point. And we can find out where, where, where they got them. You know, let's, let's, let's invoke Bobby Kennedy here and just figure out a way how we do things rather than figuring out a way why we can't do things. Yep, that's my history lesson for the night. Okay, all right. So we'll we'll look for more information in upcoming meetings. Sounds like. Okay. Uh, police station septic system, Brian, or 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 Jim. Yep. The, uh, there was one bid to repair the um, the septic system there. It was JDR Builders. Um, it was. So we'd be looking to approve the. Uh, award the bid $45,624 for repairs to the police station septic system. Is that what we expected it to be in, in, in the neighborhood of? Um, I think so. Based on everything that's going on, I think that's, I think that's pretty much what we thought it would be. The papers indicated most would be paid by insurance. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's an active claim with our insurance company. So the, the only cost that wouldn't be covered, and I just spoke with Keith a little while ago, <clears throat> um, he still hasn't heard back from the insurance adjuster yet to, to get the final yes, we'll pay for the whole thing. Um, but regardless of what that is, we're still going to be responsible for a $3,000 pipe and a $1,000 deductible. So that's going to be the cost to, to the town. Four thousand dollars, roughly. I'm not sure of the exact number, but I know yeah. it's right around four thousand dollars. And do you happen to know where that four thousand dollars is being budgeted from? Is it from this year's police budget, or is it in next year's police budget, or is it some other part of the budget? Does anybody happen to know? It hasn't been budgeted at all from a police perspective. We have been covering the costs of. Um, taking pictures of the pipe, scoping the pipe, um, draining the tank initially. So, I mean, some of those costs, I think we're, I, I haven't added them up recently, but we're probably close to a thousand dollars of those costs, which um, we don't we don't budget for a lot of money as far as the building yeah. goes. Everything that we budget for is, is already kind of accounted for. So there's not much wiggle room there. So we're already into it for about a thousand dollars. We may have to deal with it at the same special town meeting that we talk about the police car. Yeah, what is that? I, mean, I guess I'm the order of operations. Brian, where would that four thousand dollars co come from? If we say, like, if we approve this tonight, I sort of feel like we ought to know where that money's coming from. Yep, I, I would recommend that it come out of the reserve fund. Um, there's a twenty thousand dollar reserve fund that that we have each year. That's at the discretion okay. of the finance committee. It's twenty thousand dollars. I don't think we've accessed it at all. So okay. um, that's for unanticipated expenses. It seems like it's exactly one of those. Okay. Can all right. I just didn't want to like approve something and without knowing at least some idea where that money might come from, with reasonable uh, certainty. Can, can and and so the plan is to do this work prior to June thirtieth. Yeah. I'd like to, so, so we have a septic system. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> yep. They're overrated. ASAP. Okay. Well, then I would move that we uh, approve this bid. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Me, yes. Okay. Um, Personnel committee recommendation for creation of a traffic control officer position and a recreation coordinator position. So um, these are two new positions that were job descriptions were reviewed by the, the personnel committee. Um, like you mentioned, one was for a traffic control officer and one was for a recreation coordinator. Both of those job descriptions are in the meeting material that you got very late. Um, I guess, Jim, do you want to just talk quickly about the traffic control officer position? Uh, 
I didn't realize I was muted. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, we discussed this a couple of times with the personnel committee. Um, this, this, really the the backbone behind this, I guess you could call it, is with the whole police reform thing um, coming up that that requires a a great deal of training on on the part of our part current part time officers. Um, to the point where some of those part-time officers um, aren't going to be able to or might not want to put the effort into going through all that training um, to become certified. So from my perspective, we have retired people, we have um, soon to be retired officers. Um, there's other officers around the county that have retired. And what we're seeing is some departments are going with um, a civilian, if you will, civilian traffic control units where they're using those retired officers. And instead of having to, to have them attend all of the training, they're just creating just a traffic control position where they would direct traffic on um, details for Eversource or Verizon, anything that they're doing in the work that they're doing in the road, just directing traffic like we would do now um, as, as police officers, but we're just creating a position where they're not required to be a certified police officer in order to, to um, be able to work those jobs, if you will. So that's kind of the, the nuts and bolts of it. I mean, I, there's, we have a policy in place for it, which uh, the policy kind of, they took that language and created the, um, the job description for it. So our policy and the job description kind of use the same language as far as the equipment that's going to be required, you know, how much they're going to get paid, how they go about getting hired um, for a job. It would, you know, the job would go to a, a police officer, a regular member of the police department first. If we can't fill it, then we would go to that, that traffic control um, list of people that we, that we may, may have. Okay, Jim, can I ask a couple questions? A, sure. this would be on an as-needed basis. This would not be budget impact, correct? Correct. It'd, it'd be a per diem thing, just, just like it is now. The, the fees would be paid by the, by the vendor or the contractor. Um, in addition to that, we would still collect administrative fees for the processing of the, the paperwork and all of that stuff as well. And my second question is, Remind us again why the priority would be a police officer as opposed to anyone else looking to earn extra dollars. So we had originally at our last meeting, we discussed because there was some language in there that said they had to be a retired police officer. Uh, we took that language out so they're not required to be a retired police officer. Um, from my perspective, looking at it, um, and initially having it in there as retired police officers was just for the fact that they already have the traffic control training that they would be required to have. And they already have CPR first responder training that they'd be required to have uh, in order to have this position as well. And on top of that, they already have the experience of you know, conducting traffic and um, traffic control as well. So rather than bringing somebody in somebody in brand new, somebody off the street that's never done it before, the, the level of training that we would have to provide and um, the management that we would have to provide, you know, watching them. It's, it's a little bit harder on a, on a detail than it is me doing field training for a police officer because I'm not out there with them for eight hours doing the, the traffic detail. So why does someone who's, and I'm, and I'm simplifying it, so forgive mm -hmm. me, why does someone who's essentially making sure that people, you know, are stopping traffic coming one way and, and letting another traffic go or doing, why do they need CPR training? Well, there's, there's much more to it than just stopping and starting traffic. Um, this, as far as the, the safety of the crew that's working there, the safety for the general public. I mean, we've had crashes before we've had to render first aid. There's been incidents on, on the site where um, vendors are, Contractors that are working there have, have suffered from some sort of illness or have had, had uh, some sort of uh, medical emergency, which we've had to, to tend to until the ambulance can get there. Um, so those, those types of things re requiring CPR, I mean, you're, you're out in the public, you're working 
with people that could become injured and, and could have some sort of issue. So we want to have some basic level of, of uh, first aid training. So the CPR first, first responder training covers what we would, what we would need for that. <clears throat> Hopefully that answers. Yeah. I, 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 I'm just thinking that it's, it's the, it's the exception and not the rule that those instances take place, obviously. So I'm just asking. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we did um, um, change the, I'm trying to look through it here and, and find the place. When we voted on this at the personnel committee, we did vote to have it not be restricted to just uh, retired police officers, that anyone who had the proper training yeah. could apply. So, there, so, so the section, the way it was worded was, um, was previously, previously employed as a full-time or part-time Massachusetts State Police Officer, Massachusetts Deputy Sheriff, um, but is not required to be a post-certified officer. So we took that language out that's required to, that was previously employed as a full-time or part-time officer. That's the language that was taken out. Yeah, so that was taken time. out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I'm not no, finding there's it. There's no either, requirement that they had to have full-time or part-time police training, um, but that's what we the preference that we would look at first, just, just from a management perspective, it's easier to manage somebody that's been doing this for 20 or 30 years than it is for having to train somebody brand new to just yeah. to do that and, job. And, and no one's suggesting you have to train someone brand new. Yep. Yep. No, that's why, that's why it was, the preference was for retired or previously employed police officers. I have no questions and I'm fine with it. I'm fine. Me too. Do I hear a motion? Move we accept the position of, what are we calling it? Traffic control, Traffic control officer. officer as Second. submitted. Second. Aye. Second. All those in favor, Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me, yep. Okay. Community impact fees for marijuana establishments. We've got the uh, rec, rec department also. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yep. So this is a, uh, a recreation coordinator position that would work under the direction of the Recreation Commission with ultimate supervisory authority with the select board. The reason that's set up that way is because the Rec Commission is, is actually um as the town has set up the rec commission is actually advisory to the select board um so it made sense to have it that way um it would be five hour per week um, um five hour per week position um it would essentially be a rec coordinator position we have the duties and responsibilities um listed i can share the screen if you want um but it's essentially trying to take a burden off the rec commission um, and especially the rec chair, as Jonathan knows, does a lot. Um, and um, this was talked about um, by the personnel committee on two different, occasion, two different occasions. Um, and I think the funding was tentatively approved last night for, by the finance committee. Is that true? Yeah. Um, the, the, the position was, I don't think we even talked about a wage, an hourly wage on this position. Joyce, was that? We, no, we, we did. It's the same wage as an administrative assistant, which is you know, within a nickel of $21 an hour. Yeah. Uh, okay, because I, I think the initial proposal from the rec department had said something like $35 an hour. Yeah. Yeah, we, we decided sure we, we were not in that ballpark. Yeah. We could not pay them more than we pay our highway superintendent. So right, that's uh, I think the other thing that got um, added in there was that the person who's hired to do this could not be uh, an appointed member of the committee. You can't be a member of the committee that oversees you. Right. Um, and that this is the person who's taking the administrative burden off of the chair and the other volunteers. On the rec commission, so they're they're not they would they would not be a voting member of the rec commission. 
makes all the or sense. Or a serving people. member we wrote, serving member of the Recreation Commission. It, it, it's like the director of a nonprofit equivalent. Mm -hmm. One other thing, I, if I, Joyce, and again, correct me if I'm wrong from last night, there was talk in the general duties and responsibilities that are in the job description. Mm -hmm. It says coordinate and supervise youth sports program. There was a problem with supervise, given that this is really an administrative position and not supervisory for uh, kids production. Supervising the program, not supervising the children. Program and, and a tremendous number of volunteers, Fred. Tremendous number of volunteers. Yeah. No, I, I know. But there, there was just a question of that this person really is not dealing directly with the people who are in the programs, but dealing with the administ with the hmm. <laughs> dealing with the supervisors rather than supervising actual programs. Oh I, no, I I think this person as again to take a, the load off of the the right incredible amount of work that a chair does. Um, this yeah. person would be supervising and working with, and I'm not a big fan of the word supervisor, but. Um, you know, they, they would be coordinating coaches, volunteers. Um, you know, it, it's it's a lot of, you use coordination, you use supervision, but there's a lot there, you know. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying there isn't, but supervising the adults in the program and not deal, not directly supervising activities. It's both. I, I don't think the distinction is, I guess I don't understand. Okay, that's why they that's would, I, just I don't remember any objection to them to having someone who would supervise a sports program. Well, there, there was talk about emphasizing sportsmanship or something, which would be, which would have been more. Oh program. yeah, but that was that was a policy thing. This rec commission should come up with a policy that they don't stack teams. They're probably not going to do it. That, that that policy already exists. Yeah. Then. And and if people and don't somebody should have been at the finance committee meeting to tell Paul that before he got off on his if, rant. If, and move, I've move on conversations before, yeah. and I've told people if they don't think that teams yeah. if that the teams are made as evenly as possible, they are crazy. Yeah. Let's move on. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> um Community impact from marijuana establishments. Oh no, we need to vote. Oh. We need to vote. Do I hear a motion? I move we accept this position as uh, submitted. Second. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Brad. Yes. Me, yes. Okay, now marijuana. Um, so recently the Senate approved some uh, amendments to the legislation. Um, they still need to pass the House, um, but there's, I think there's a commitment from the Speaker of the House to, to also present um, some amendments to the legislation. And the ones that I just wanted to touch on, and I think I just wanted to start a discussion on was um, the ones that impact host community agreements, because that impacts the town. Um, under the new legislation, um, the Cannabis Control Commission will have authority to um, accept or reject any host community agreement that's um, agreed upon by a municipality and a, a marijuana establishment. So that's changed from what it is now where the where the jurisdiction isn't clear. Um, and then um, the other one is that it talks about um, there's a there's a provision in the legislation that allows cannabis operators to sue host communities um, who charge fees without properly documenting how uh, the firm costs the municipality money. Um, so I had some conversations with the chief of staff for, for Senator Comerford about this and really, I have my own thoughts about, about this, but in, in terms of how the town of Waitley should act going forward and, and, um, it, he, he made clear to me that there's an emphasis on documenting costs, um, and essentially that only documented costs are things that the municipality can spend the community impact fee on. That's how the legislation they think is gonna be interpreted. Um, 
so the question that I, I guess the question that I have is how do we as a municipality define what those costs are? Um, and once we define what the costs are, um, then it'll be easier. We can, we can figure out ways to document them. Um, but I think that's, that's, there's a certain amount of uncertainty here that, that municipalities are left with. Um, I suggested that, that, the, that they amend the legislation to include some definition of what, what costs could be, um, but that obviously didn't make it. Um, so every municipality is going to struggle with, with what are allowable costs that we can spend our community impact fee monies on. And unless we document those costs, um, it's probably not wise to spend this, that, that community impact fee monies because now there's going to be a direct cause of action um, to essentially claw back those costs, or, or there could be um, from a marijuana establishment. So. Um, it's just something that we really need to start thinking about. And I think all municipalities that have marijuana establishments and need to, um, maybe we can see what other, what other, some of the bigger cities have, have done where they've had operators for a while. Um, we, we, we certainly can't go to small towns for that in experience because the legislature and the commission has done a very good job to preclude small towns from Anyway, um, yeah, the, the, the challenge is that, dare I use the same word again, it, it, costs are somewhat subjective. I can remember when I forget who was in a few years ago, and, and I made the comment that this is essentially a commodity. Commodities are subject to boom and bust. So what happens to a community, and, and, and this is a, 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 a somewhat of an exaggerative example, but it's, it's a viable one. What happens if a community is so good at, at marijuana, at, 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 at bringing in marijuana industry, um, that it grows by leaps and bounds, and all of a sudden that commodity, the, the, the barrel drops out, the bottom of the barrel drops out, and um, suddenly the town is, is left with um, large school districts that, uh, or, and, 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 and oversized town governance because it needed that when the town was, was booming, much like oil in Texas, much like oranges in, you know, in, in Florida or bananas in Hawaii. And all of a sudden, uh, the bottom falls out and we're left with enormous budget gaps that we can't come close to rectifying. And this legislation is essentially saying, no, you can't plan for the future. That's how I read it, at least. I, I'm reading the legislation is worse than that. And that is, you can spend whatever you want. We just don't guarantee you'll get it back, which is just an invitation for us not to spend money on things until it's either been litigated or at least adjudicated whether what we intend to spend the money on is a legitimate cost. So it's going to be a big game of chicken among communities who goes first in putting out money for something and hope, and then we'll see if that's reimbursable. I, I worry that this is going to be, I, I know the industry is, is, is supporting this, and, I, and I, I worry that it's going to become sort of a poison pill for marijuana growth no pun intended, in the Commonwealth, that the municipalities are going to say, you know what, this is not worth the risk to us. Go find another municipality who's willing to take on this risk. But municipalities are not in the risk business. Yeah, another great example of our state deciding that municipalities, screw you. You can't collect any revenue locally and use it for what you need we can and you'll get whatever we decide you're going to get later based on whatever we think is the reason to do it i mean the state government does it all the time they give us very very little ability to raise our own funds other than property taxes status quo it keeps them just sorry that was my rant i know we only get one person meeting and it, mine was not very coherent 
but it is just a very typical of how our state government runs. Brian, this- I've, I've got one other, I'm sorry, just go off, John. Okay. Uh, clarification question. Does this apply to agreements with uh, growers and wholesales only or does it apply to retail establishments as well? It, it, it relates to the community impact fee for all types of marijuana establishments. The, okay. the 3% tax is only for retail excise tax. The local excise tax is only is only on retail. Okay, so this does not affect the 3%, that 3% tax, but it does oh. affect other. I, I just want to make sure we know the impact that the people, anyone watching this knows what we're talking about. Right. And and the challenge with that, Fred, is, is that it makes the agricultural piece to this even riskier. So the small rural farm-based communities um, are, are, are really left wondering what they're going to do because that is not subject to any 3% excise. Which, um, which wouldn't be the first time that the state legislature hung the rural areas out to dry. <laughs> if, if you noticed, I was, I, was, I was leading the horse to water, but I wasn't making the horse drink and you just drank, so I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Is this the same legislation? And I can forgive me if I'm wrong, but is this the same legislation where the Senate president and the House, because there was some legislation recently where the Senate president and the House speaker sort of got behind closed doors and, 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 and came away with this, with, with this, this package that they were going to announce. Sure that's every piece of legislation, John. Well, but- right. But this was amplified even, even greater. Um, another example sure. of how, how open meeting laws in towns are ridiculous because the legislature doesn't have to uh, adhere to them. But I don't know what to do about this, you guys, because we are, you know, Jared's here. We're going to document our costs. I I mean, that's, maybe we need to hire another administrative assistant. (laughs) (laughs) And we could put that cost on, you know, on an impact fee because they, we need to use them to document the costs of, (laughs) <laughs> the uh, impact of marijuana growth in our uh, community. Fully and then it would get rejected and we'd be held Joyce, that's brilliant. to cover the cost. That's the- companies that have federal grants, you literally have to hire a new person just for reporting. Yeah. It's called bootstrapping, isn't it? <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, Jerry, do you have any uh, thoughts? Uh, um, hey, guys. Uh, I wasn't sure if this was a an appropriate time to, to chime in. Um, so the other the other kind of salient feature is that in that um, I, I guess the expectation is that uh, the triple uh, C would claw away anything that wasn't strictly a three percent fee. Um, so in future HCAs that you guys uh, negotiate with other uh, cannabis uh, concerns of whatever stripe. Um, that that may be something that you want to review with KP Law or whoever the municipal uh, advisors are. But 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 only yep. retail is subject to the three percent excise, and the others aren't. So that means it would claw back anything other than the three percent retail, leaving nothing for the other mm-hmm. two components of of of, of marijuana uh, of the it's, marijuana industry. Am I am I wrong in that? That's how I would. Understand. Understand it as well. I was talking about the um, impact. Donations. Yeah, actually, oh, I know. Those donations would become, you know, subject to triple C scrutiny. There's the impact three percent impact fee and the three percent local excise tax on retail. Yes, yes. On retail, in, in, it. Yep. It is also escalating five thousand, ten thousand dollar donations to the drug aware, you know, to the K through twelve drug awareness education program. And the uh, the, the uh, what do you call it the um, uh, charity of our choice that uh, positively impacts weekly. So those those features of the host community agreement may be maybe something to look at. Hey 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 Jared, you may not know the answer to this, and maybe maybe you do. The five commission the five current commission members. The last time I looked, and this is several years ago, um, their definition of rural was someone who lived in the in the middle of the state in Worcester County. Um, has that has that makeup changed? I don't know the answer to that, but I, I will certainly ask my regulatory attorney and I'll get back to you on that one. Okay. I mean, I can look it up too, but thank you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just from our side, we're, we're not looking to be, a, I mean, uh, we, we want to be reasonable and, and 
uh, good community members here um, and you know active participants in, in community growth. I mean, uh, that's do, do you think that we've been reasonable? All, all, all transparency. Have we been reasonable or have we been over the top? I would say I would say markedly more reasonable than other towns we, we interact with. Oh, so we not only get to thank the legislature, but we get to thank the, 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 the our our colleagues in other towns that haven't figured mm -hmm. out how to operate. Good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, our our intent is to, uh, is to bring more you know cannabis related development to the town, more jobs, more investment, and to improve the you know to improve the infrastructure. That you know, our, you know, our hope is that you know that that we're successful here in developing it. And, you know, we have the same concerns, uh, Jonathan, uh, as, as you do about, you know, this being a commodity and, you know, there being, um, you know, ups and downs, uh, booms and busts in the industry. Um, and we hope that we've structured ourselves, you know, to really thrive um, in both in both, uh, both conditions. We're also vertically integrated in the four walls of Wheatley. Uh, we have our cultivation, our manufacturing, and our retail all in town. Um, so we, you guys would realize the full value of what we're producing here. Um, in our case, at least. Okay. Yeah. One of, one of the things I've been kicking around in my head is if we accept that or if we think that the impact fee is is going to be little or negligible, um, in terms of in terms of what, in terms of in terms of what the town's going to see, um, is it possible to to go more towards like the structure that we have with alcohol in terms of, in terms of like a general licensing bylaw or something like that? Um, it's just something that I, that I've been thinking about, um. Yeah, and there'd be some type of licensing fee and stuff. Um, because I really, I really think this is, it, it's, it, it's not going to be, it's not going to be uh, the source of revenue that municipalities hoped it was when, you know, when the law was passed and in my opinion, when it was pitched. I mean, it's certainly so, something to look at. Yeah. Try to so figure out doing? a way to, to, to monetize the impact without being the community impact fee. Yeah, yeah. It, it, but with the way that the, the, the rules are now, I mean, we're gonna have to start looking at, at what those costs are and trying to define them. Um, yeah. And I, I, it's not something that, that, you know, we're gonna, I don't think we're gonna do at this meeting, but um, it's something we'll have to think about um, and all municipalities will, because as, as Fred mentioned, it, it creates a lot of uncertainty and a lot of risk um, spending those dollars without without knowing for sure. So we'd be happy to be part of a conversation about increasing your risk. But I mean, the risk seems to be that we disagree about what a direct cost is. And if we're coming together and kind of working on this thoughtfully, uh, I'd be happy to be part of a conversation. Yeah, I, 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 I would be okay with that. I mean, one of the things that I did thought I had thought about was some type of MOA or MOU between separate from the host community agreement. I don't know if that's legal or not, but saying, hey, we think these are allowable. Um, and then it would give the municipality the a little bit more comfort to, uh, to pay for some of those impacts costs. But um, it's something yeah, and, we need to address. Jared, I, I appreciate the offer and we would probably take you up on it, but we would have to do the same thing with any other grower as well in case they don't agree with your definitions of. Yeah. Three of us. And I think that's who you who you need to, to talk to, really. It's us, Toro Verde. They, uh, both of the other Wheatley uh, retailers just had a change of ownership in the last Triple C meeting. So the folks that you've been interacting with, uh, the, those, those, uh, the ownership of, of those two teams has just changed. And, and that, but that, that's the current lineup. There could be new ones come in on other 
in other locations that we will have to deal with also? Uh, I think the three of us uh, set are, are now at your maximum. Uh, I think the town oh, okay. has a high maximum of 3% because I think it's 20% of the tax of the package stores, and I think it's, ex it's expressed as such in the, in the, in the bylaws. Unless so by you guys the way, change. I just looked up the, um, the five commissioners are, the you know, one, Bruce Stebbins is a great guy, but he's Springfield, urban, Worcester, urban, three Boston, um, or suburban. So they have no idea about rural realities, none. And the been paying attention to outdoor growers. I mean, just to throw that in there, um, you know, we're we're, in, we're a primarily outdoor cultivation. Regulation hasn't really kept up with the developments of our side. Okay. Well, Brian, I guess there's nothing we can do. We just are aware and informed, and we move on. Correct? Yeah. I'll I'll, I'll try to I'll try to figure out a process to move this forward. And I, and I would just think move cautiously when but you're spending I, I'd any like money. To, I, I think I can reach might be out related. to the other guys and um, at least. Uh... Okay. Man. All right. Brian, time minister updates. Yep. Um, so sometime in the future, um, maybe within the next month or so, uh, we'd like to hold up a, a complete streets public input meeting. Um, Keith has the... Uh, preliminary designs for the uh, finishing the sidewalks along Chestnut Plain Road, um, extending the sidewalk at the elementary school, and also some traffic safety improvements in, in West Whateley. Um, so we're thinking probably a town hall style meeting. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> an open house style meeting at the town hall, um, you know, for like two hours, have the plans up like we did last time, and we'll get some input for that. Um, so we'll figure out a time that works for everybody. Um, annual town meeting, just a reminder to say it, uh, May 24th, um, 2022. Um, I was thinking we're going to do the elementary school outside again. Is that what we were thinking? Um, yeah, so we I mean, we need, yeah, but maybe if yeah. it really looks like rain, we can use the gym. Yeah. That would give in current COVID conditions. Yep. Um, and also Haydenville Road reconstruction project. Um, I mentioned last time we were, I was going to reach out to town council. Um, and, and try to um, get some work done on the right of way acquisitions that we needed to do. Um, so one of the one of the issues that's going to hold us up is that not not in the big picture hold us up, but it's going to take longer to deal with is that some of the land that we need to acquire for for temporary and permanent easements is um, under Article ninety seven protection. Article ninety seven protection is is a state protection that says that this land should forever be conservation. Um, you know, for conservation purposes. So um, it literally takes an act of the legislature um, to to release that land from Article 97 protection. So I was gonna take an article on the annual town meeting to authorize the select board to um, file a special petition with the legislature to um, take that land out of Article 97 protection. The state also has what's called a no net loss of Article 97 land policy which means that if we're taking out an acre of Article 97 land, we need to protect an acre of new land under Article 97. Um, so that's something that we'll also have to think about as to how we can do that. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that that process has started. Um, there will be, um, we'll be requesting an article on the annual town meeting warrant to authorize the select board to, um, to start making those. Do we have any idea yet how much Russians. land we're talking about that would be under this? Um, it can't be a huge amount because we weren't looking at it. It's not, no. It's right of way on either side of the road, if I remember. Yeah, you know, it, it's trips. not going to be a significant amount. Um, one of our options, that, and I know I, I, I reached out to Lynn, we have a couple of um, tax title, tax foreclosed properties in town that's vacant land that are that's adjacent to already state owned land. Um, it may make sense to just um, donate that or protect Article 97, protect that. It's landlocked. It, it, yep. it came about when they put in 91 that there was all these miscellaneous parcels that, mm. um, you know, we could we could protect those um, or we could protect them and then donate them to the state. Then we would get extra money for state-owned land when we get the payments annually. 
but anyways, there's, there's, there's ways around this. So, but it's going to take a little while. Okay. Um, it, it can take about a year for the process because we got to wait for the special legislation. So we're going to get on it now, but it's going to probably be about a year process. Anything else? Um, that's about it. Yes. Uh, then I move we adjourn. I will second. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Me, yep. Have a great night, everybody. <laughs>